If you believe the stories, mankind's pride gave rise to the Darkspawn. Countless in number and toxic to all life, Darkspawn search endlessly for an archdemon. When they find one, Darkspawn armies surge up from their corrupt barrows beneath the ground, and a blight begins. Grey Wardens are the only warriors capable of destroying an archdemon, and history always honors the one who sacrifices all to kill the beast. In the fifth blight, the Warden was the hero of Ferelden, a castless dwarf from Orzammar. Branded by the unbending rules of Orzammar society, the hero was forced into a life of crime. Duncan, a Grey Warden, found and recruited the resourceful dwarf into the Wardens. The allied Ferelden and Grey Warden forces met in Ostagar, where King Kaelin's armies and a host of Wardens gathered, ready to destroy the Darkspawn. But Valor turned to despair as Loghain betrayed his king. Kaelin's forces were slaughtered, and the South was lost. The hero, now a full-fledged Grey Warden, survived with the aid of Flemeth, the mysterious Witch of the Wilds. Joined by Flemeth's daughter, Morrigan, and a Grey Warden named Alistair, the heroes set out to build an army strong enough to abolish the Blight. With the traitorous Loghain now seated on Ferelden's throne, the Warden sought help from the influential Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. However, they arrived in Redcliffe to find the town under siege, as each night undead rose in waves and assailed the battered village. With the heroes' help, the people of Redcliffe stood fast against the undead horde. The wardens reached Arl Eamon's castle only to find the Arl lying at the edge of death and his court fallen into madness. To save his father's life, Eamon's young son, Connor, had made a deal with a demon and quickly fallen victim to its possession. Connor's life was sacrificed to end the demonic threat to Redcliffe. But deals with demons are never straightforward. The demon agreed only to save Eamon's life, not restore him to health. Arl Eamon needed a miracle to recover. The hero located an urn containing the sacred ashes of Andraste, which were said to cure any ailment. The urn was protected by ancient traps, tests of will, and a dragon-worshipping cult that wanted to twist the urn's power to its own ends. The cultists encouraged the hero to profane the ashes with dragon's blood, which caused the urn and its contents to shatter. With a pinch of the ashes, the hero restored the Arl to health. Informed of Loghain's treachery, Eamon swore his political and military support. The circles of Magi are bound by oath to aid the Grey Wardens in times of blight. However, Lake Kalanad's tower could offer little help. One of its mages, Uldred, had become possessed by a pride demon and was twisting other circle mages into abominations. The hero brought the tower under control using the right of annulment to eliminate every mage. Grateful for the help, the tower's Templars joined the Warden's army. The allies gained at the circle were not the only soldiers to join the Warden's forces, however. Dalish elves don't usually make alliances, but even deep hatred can be set aside in the face of oblivion. An ancient curse was destroying Ferelden's largest Dalish clans, turning the elves into werewolves. Zathrian, the clan's keeper, claimed that the cure required the heart of the great wolf, Witherfang. Years before, Zathrian himself had afflicted a group of humans with the curse that now ravaged his clan. As long as he lived, the curse endured. Swayed by the pleas of the Lady of the Forest, the hero eliminated the Dalish and gained the werewolves as allies. Blights may happen hundreds of years apart, but the dwarves who live below the surface of Thedas fight Darkspawn every day. No one is better schooled in battling Darkspawn than the warriors of Orzammar except perhaps their allies of old, the Grey Wardens. The hero arrived in Orzammar in the wake of King Endrin's death to find political factions fighting for control of the dwarven capital. 
Only the vote of a venerated paragon could break the deadlock to elect a ruler and order the dwarves to honor their Grey Warden treaty and join the battle against the new blight. The hero set off to find a paragon named Branca, who had disappeared into the deep roads in search of a legendary artifact, the Anvil of the Void, created by the renowned smith Caradon to forge mighty war golems. With Branca's help, the hero restored the Anvil of the Void, and a small army of powerful golems joined the Warden's forces. The hero emerged from the deep roads with a master-forged crown to bestow the Paragon's favor upon whichever rival candidate would be crowned king. Balin, the youngest son of King Andrin who was suspected of foul play, or Haramont, the aging traditionalist backed by the Dwarven Assembly. Lord Haramont claimed the crown of Orzammar. His traditionalist values keep dwarves first in all things and safely as far underground as possible. With Dwarden's strength now bolstering the Warden's army, the hero had to deal with Loghain so Ferelden could stand unified against the Darkspawn before the Blight swallowed the world. The kingdom of Ferelden stood divided. While some nobles supported Loghain's regency, others condemned his inaction against the Darkspawn. Civil war brewed and Arl Eamon called a landsmeet in hopes of curtailing the conflict and removing Loghain from the throne. As penance, Loghain was sentenced to join the Grey Wardens and fight Darkspawn until the end of his days. As the Wardens' united army massed in Redcliffe, the Darkspawn overran Denerim, laying siege to Ferelden's capital city. The hero's army fought valiantly through Denerim and broke the Darkspawn siege. On Fort Dracon's highest tower, the hero's strongest allies fought alongside the Warden in a final heroic battle against the massive Archdemon. The hero of Ferelden paid the ultimate price, the life of a Grey Warden given to kill the Archdemon and end the Blight. With no Archdemon to lead them, the Darkspawn scattered. Most fled underground, still teeming in number and always seeking a new archdemon to awaken. The shattered kingdom of Ferelden embarked on a long journey to recovery. In the Blight's aftermath, strong leadership was crucial. Alistair, King Caelan's half-brother, and Queen Enora, Caelan's widow and daughter of Loghain, joined in a political union. Together, they ushered Ferelden into a new era. Ferelden still stands, as obstinate and resolute as the Dog Lords ever are, but the events of the Fifth Blight loom over it as the nation rebuilds. For people across Thetis, legends of the hero of Ferelden remain the nation's brightest beacons of hope during its darkest times. It all began in Kirkwall, the fall of Knight Commander Meredith, the Kunari Uprising. And of course, the Chantry's destruction, and the onset of Mage Rebellion. One person always stood amidst the swirling chaos, Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. The Hawk family fled Lothering, refugees from the Blight. Leandra, mother of the champion and siblings Bethany and Carver, hoped to find refuge at her family's estate in Kirkwall, far to the north. While Hawk had no magical abilities, the champion was at the heart of events that ultimately led to the Mage Rebellion. The Hawks escaped the Blight with the help of Aveline Valen, a warrior and family friend. It's said that the family was also aided by Flemeth, the notorious Witch of the Wilds. Hawk's brother, Carver, never reached the Free Marches. He was killed by Darkspawn while protecting his family. The family's first years in Kirkwall were difficult. Leandra's brother Gamlin had lost the family fortune. The Hawks lived in poverty, forced to indenture themselves in return for entrance to the city. To pay off the debt, Hawk was forced to work for a band of mercenaries. All the while, Hawk and Bethany did their best to hide Bethany's magic from the Templars. Opportunity eventually struck in the form of a dwarf named Bartran Tethrys, who was planning an expedition to the Deep Roads. 
It was a long shot, but with gold gained from the expedition, Hawk could free the family from its criminal creditors and further Templar scrutiny. Hawk met a rogue Grey Warden named Anders, who possessed detailed maps of the Deep Roads. These maps were crucial to the expedition's success. Once Hawk obtained them, everything else fell quickly into place. Bethany joined Hawk on the expedition. The siblings found ancient dwarven treasure and a statuette formed from a strange red lyrium. Bethany fell victim to the blight that suffuses the Deep Roads, but Anders led her to a group of Grey Wardens who were able to save her life. The gold Hawk recovered from the Deep Roads brought back Leandra's stately childhood home in Hightown. The Hawks had barely settled into their new home when Leandra was murdered, a deeply sinister and twisted killing. Hawk hunted down Quentin, the blood mage responsible, but could not prevent Leandra's death. Leandra's tragic death was part of a critical problem facing Kirkwall. Rising tension between the city's mages, who felt increasingly oppressed, and Templars, who grew increasingly suspicious of their activities. Adding to the strain, a large contingent of Kunari had also established themselves in Kirkwall, much to the growing discomfort of the city's rulers. After their dreadnought was shipwrecked many years before, a group of stranded Kunari were allowed to remain in a cordoned-off area in Lowtown. As time passed, the Kunari made no effort to return home and offered no explanation about why they remained. Tensions rose to a breaking point. Revered Mother Patrice convinced the Kunari were a threat to the Chantry's faith, incited violence between the Kunari and the Kirkwall populace. Hawk knew that Patrice would bring about unnecessary conflict. Though the champion tried to stop her, Patrice orchestrated the murder of Seamus Dumar, a Viscount's son and a recent convert to the Kuhn. When her crime was discovered, a Quinari assassin killed her. After Seamus was murdered, the Arashak of the Quinari group lost patience with the humans of Kirkwall. They would now submit to the Kuhn or die. The Kunari struck hard and fast. They took the palace in Hightown and beheaded the Viscount to immediately quash any resistance. Aided by Knight Commander Meredith and First Enchanter Orsino, Hawk reached the palace and stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fearsome Kunari leader. Hawk's ally, Isabella, was a notorious raider and ultimately responsible for the crisis. She had stolen the Tome of Coslan from the Kunari who remained in Kirkwall to search for it. Isabella returned the book, and Hawk let the Kunari take her prisoner as penance. Finally appeased, the Kunari returned home peacefully. Hawk saved Kirkwall and earned the grudging respect of the city's Templars, mages, and nobility, along with the title that history remembers, the Champion of Kirkwall. Kirkwall's problems were still not over, however. After Viscount Dumar's death, Knight Commander Meredith took power and blocked all attempts to appoint a new Viscount. Under Meredith's command, the Templars tightened their grip on the mages, planning to suppress what Meredith saw as a growing rebellion. Anders, who spent years fighting for justice and freedom for his fellow mages, saw that the time for negotiation was past. He destroyed Kirkwall's chantry, killing hundreds including Grand Cleric Elthina. This single act began a rebellion that spread from circle to circle, until all circles of Magi had risen up in defiance against Chantry rule. There was no forgiveness for what Anders had done, and he asked for death at Hawk's hands. Hawk fulfilled the troubled mage's final request, and many others died along with Anders that day. Fighting spread swiftly through the city. Some mages rebelled openly, many of them succumbing to possession. Templars turned their swords on mages who rebelled and on those who did not. As First Enchanter Orsino refused to bend to the Templars, Knight Commander Meredith demanded that every mage in Kirkwall be put to the sword. The Templars found an ally in the champion, who fought alongside them to quash the rebellious mages. 
In the end, the Templars placed Hawk on the Viscount's throne. For a time, at least. The battle proved one thing. Knight Commander Meredith had gone mad. Hawk saw the truth of it when Meredith unsheathed her sword, and the red lyrium idol from the deep roads was embedded within it. The blade fueled her hatred and paranoia, as it had for months. After a horrific battle, the red lyrium of the Knight Commander's sword consumed her as she died. Meredith became a statue, her face a frozen mask of horror. Little is known of the champion since that final battle. However, Hawk's story lives on in legend and song. Memories of the indelible changes the champion of Kirkwall brought to the face of Thetis. The Mage Rebellion in Kirkwall was felt throughout Thetis, the news spreading like wildfire. The Templars clamped down in response, but each new restriction only made things worse. Led by Grand Enchanter Fiona, the mages voted for independence. The Circle of Magi would govern itself, without the Chantry and especially without the Templars. The result was cataclysmic. Two circles were destroyed. Those within killed to the last mage, before the rest fled into the wilderness. Perhaps the mighty empire of Orlais could have intervened in the war before it began, but that was not to be. Grand Duke Espard began a deadly civil war against Empress Selene, vying for the Orlesian throne. The mages were offered safe haven in neighboring Ferelden, but the Templars followed, and so their battle spread across all of Thedas. As head of the Chantry, Divine Justinia ordered the Templars to stand down. They refused, declaring their own independence. Thus the war began in earnest, Templars hunting mages, mages fighting Templars. Their clashes wreaked untold destruction, and all sense of order was falling to pieces. Divine Justinia made one final desperate bid to end the war. She approached the leaders of both sides and convinced them to come to a conclave held on neutral ground. With the Chantry to mediate, mages and Templars will talk for the first time since this all began. It is our last, and perhaps our only, chance for peace. 